Why is it always pointing the wrong direction? Okay, let's see if we can go. Still not up there. Why is it pointing the wrong direction? Oh, this is so confusing. Oh, God, look at the glare. Where does that glare come from? There. That light doesn't help at all. Okay, move the microphone up where people can hear me. Hello, hello, hello. Boy, not much response on the microphone there. Ooh, what was that little button right there? Mm, it looks like a shear button. Mm, so try it. No. No, no, no. Okay, forget it. I wish I could figure out how to show my desktop. Oh, anyway. Oh, let me uh, go check the other computer. Okay, got a couple more minutes. I think we're actually set up our notes over here. Good. Thanks, guy. That's that's always one of my questions. Am I am I really getting out or just going out in a black hole? So thanks, guy. We're gonna get started here in a few seconds. Uh, I allowed myself enough time to try to get things set up. Sometimes it takes me a while to do that. Hey, there's Andrew. Andrew is back. Good to see you. I, I I like this setup from the standpoint the screen I'm looking at to monitor my webcam has the chat in it. Hangouts on the air, it has a chat, but it doesn't work. But this um, doesn't have, or, or I can't find it, a way to share my desktop and switch between the webcam and the desktop. I missed that. So anyway, let me see if uh, I can type something in the chat with the same computer. Whoops. <laughs> type something meaningful. All right. So be, are you hearing a lot of background noise? Because I got several fans on. It still hasn't cooled down in my office even though today's the first day here in Florida that it's cooled down outside. It's still hot in my office. Matter of fact, it's 84 degrees in my office. And so I have uh, several fans on me. The air condition thermostat is downstairs and downstairs it's cool. So the thermostat says air condition not needed, turns it off. All right. 
Okay, and I don't know if the camera is going to, uh, yeah, it's, okay, it does autofocus. That, that's good. We're doing pretty good. Uh, I probably ought to get it up a little higher. Uh, without breaking something, whoops, without breaking something. Okay, put down on my desktop. That's a little better. It's kind of cockeyed, but yeah, it's okay. Just remember that it's quick. <laughs> the other th everything that really blows your mind is uh, when I look at my computer, at what you're seeing, for me, not for you, but for me, everything's backwards. So when I push something to the left, it goes to the right on the screen. Very confusing. I don't know why they do that. Can't read what's written on the box. Well, I can't either, so don't feel bad. It's it's a lot of, it's pretty hard to read, and it's gray on brown. It's like, give me a break, people. So uh, don't expect to read what's on the box, because I can't read it either. Hey, two hands in a radio. How you doing? Okay, we're going to get started here in a couple minutes. Start on time for a change. Now, what I don't see, oh, there it is. Okay. I was going to say, I don't see how many people are in the, um, are viewing, but uh, it's, at a it's in a different spot on this screen. They always have to make things so different. And there's a, actually a thumbs up in, uh, icon on my screen, too. So that's cool. And there's Jeff King. And Jeff, for the first time, your symbols that you put out, are readable. When I'm looking at them on um, my usual YouTube page, after the fact, uh, they're garbage. They don't come through properly. But now in the chat, they come through properly. So good things are happening for a change. I hope the uh, I hope I get enough lighting in here. I'm trying to keep the lighting down again because. Uh, so hot in here, 84 degrees here in my office. The good news is the humidity is down for, they said, it'll be down for two days, a day and a half. Then the humidity will come back. Okay, let's see. Oh, my clock says it's 11 o'clock, so let's get started. The idea of this Hangout is to do a intro into this radio. Now, I have, I opened the box only to look in it. That's all I did. I didn't take everything out. I just looked in the box. I've had it for, I hate to admit it, for about 10 days. So I'm kind of negligent on getting to it. But, and I didn't find much information about this. I noticed uh, on my screen, the picture is a little grainy. It's probably because of the low light. Let me turn some more lights on. See if I can get rid of some of that grain. Yeah, that helped a little bit, at least on my end. It's not as grainy now. Um, I haven't, I didn't find too much information on this radio. Now, I've always been out for a while. Now, this one is supposedly the new, new, new one. Uh, and one of my subscribers told me about it about two weeks ago. And uh, I mulled around for a couple of days, and then I looked it up and got it. All right, let's get started. Let's open this box. Very plain brown box. And what this is, is the new, new, revised, revised. Get it out of here. There's the battery. There's a thing that I never used. Throw that away. Okay. This is, as you can see, I haven't opened this up. So, both you and I are going to be looking at this. I'm hoping some people have used this that can help me or help us. We will see. This is the Quan Zing Zhang Zoom um, model. Oh, gosh, I forgot the model. What? UVR50. Now, if that doesn't sound familiar, I don't know what does. That sounds like a Bofang UV5R. 
and it looks very much like it. And I'll show you my five R's in a minute. So let's get this little sticky stuff off of here. And feel free to jump in there, and I'll because I got the, I got the chat uh, window open up on this computer now, so I don't have to go across the room, so I can see your comments, good or bad. And uh, let me see if I can get this in the camera. There's what it looks like. Very much like the Bofang, but yet different. And then here's the battery. I wonder. Uh, no, it looks different. I was going to say, I wonder if the battery is interchangeable with the Bofangs. That looks a little different. So well, here we go. We're going to see if there's any sparks. In the, <laughs> that's the thing about doing a live show. Things can blow up in your face, especially if you don't do things right. Always, this is always like, a, always like a Chinese puzzle for me to get these things on. Oops, if I'd have missed. There, snaps right in when you do it right. Okay, so uh, there's no antenna. Now, let me just look, let me look at the description of this. This is I grabbed this off of Amazon, and it says this radio contains a programming cable which my original Bofang did not come with, an in-depth user's guide. We're going to look at that. Uh, programming with the Quan Sing programming software is easy, but they don't include it. You have to download it, and the link they give you is a little funky, and you're like, eh, is this something bad? So I, I was a little hesitant, so uh, about an hour ago, I finally downloaded it, and it was okay. Uh, and it says, use uh, you can use the the new UB R50 user's guide and YouTube videos to learn how to use this thing or how to program it. I didn't find too many videos. Now I didn't look real long. This is this elegant ham radio is a classy way to show your love. Of technology. Oof, what a bunch of BS. Oh, God. Almost makes me sick. Upgrades from the previous version are increased transmit and receive power. Increased receive power. I don't know what receive power is. Hmm. On the basis of new generation chipset. So they, pro they I think it just means they reprogrammed the chipset. Equipped with a portable antenna and a 38 centimeter pure copper dual high gain antenna. So you get two antennas. And I'm going to tell you the price in a second. Uh, new hardened dural, durable radio shell, 30% larger battery, battery cast it battery capacity increased to 3,200 milliamp hours. 3,200, that's a pretty big number. I think the original Bofang was either 1,800 or 2,200. Um, add a direct charging jack. Okay, that's different. The Bofang, you have to use the charging cradle and put it in the cradle. This one indicates that you can plug it, the uh, charging adapter, right into the radio. That's nice. I don't like that cradle. It takes up a lot of room. Okay. High, low power settings, 5 watts or 1 watts. Now, if the max power is 5 watts, uh, back up here where it says increase transmit power, that's not an increase. Maybe it's over an increase over this radio's previous model, but it's not an increase over the Bofang advertised, which we know is not really what it puts out. Five watts. Um, only commercial FM radio reception. Only commercial radio FM. I'm not sure what that means. It, it's implying that the Bofang doesn't have FM reception, which it does. UV, I mean VHF from 136 to 174, VHF 400 to 520. Now the Bofang will receive, I believe, outside those ranges. I may be wrong. It's I've had my Bofang sitting on the shelf for six months, so I don't remember. Let me see what's in it. Maybe there's a whole bunch of people correcting me. Let me look in the chat room.
Uh, so, Guy, you're saying that the batteries are interchangeable? Okay. Ex extraordinary clarity. The bright LED flashlight and three-color backlight, LCD, and backlight keypad, keyboard, makes the radio easy to use during the night. Okay. Now, let's look at the prices. I know You probably can't read this scribbling I got. This radio... Um, I got, and it's still on sale, for $29.95. Okay, I found this morning, I found an equivalent package with the extra antenna of the Bofang UV5R is $39.88. So it's, the Bofang is $10 more right now. Now, the original Bofang, which is just the radio and the... Uh, uh, plug-in charger is on sale right now for $24.90. It doesn't come with the programming cable. This one does. It doesn't come with the extra an antenna, but this one does. So it's only $5 more to get the programming cable and the extra antenna. I think that's all I got in my notes. So let's get that out of the way. So here is the program cable. Now, for my original Bofang, which I paid, I think, $35 for, did not come in with programming cable. I had to buy this, and I think it was another $10. And then you use, oh, look at there. Now, wait a minute. The ad said you had to download the software. Here's a disk. So maybe the software is on the disk. Hmm, I jumped ahead here. Let me get to that later. Um, here is the speaker mic. Gizmo, so he's got an earbud, plus it's got a microphone so you can talk and you can listen using um, the earphone and the speaker mic. Little, Not a speaker mic, it's it's a little mic, okay? And that plugs in the side of the radio, similar to the both. I keep going the wrong way. Okay, so you get that. And here is, ooh, now wait a minute. Okay, let me look in here. Let me look. I think I got gypped. Yep, I don't. Well, well, there's a charging cradle right there. Okay, and this is the belt clip. And this is the adapter. Now, what's it, maybe what they're saying is you can, uh, this little AC adapter, you can plug directly into the radio or use this thing right here, which is like the kind of like the Bofang, but it's different. Oh! There's the extra antenna. Uh, I was I was getting a little worried this morning. I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know that extra antenna they said that you get? That's kind of long to fit in a little box like this. Well, they had it uh, rolled up. So there's the extra antenna you get that you don't get with the record Bofang, but you do get with that kit, that Bofang kit that somebody is selling, but it's $39.88. So what you're getting extra is you're getting then the standard, which is the standard Bofang now is $24.90. You get this better antenna, supposedly better antenna. Well, you get the standard antenna. And you get, where is it? You get this programming cable, which doesn't come with the $24.90 Bofang. And apparently... Even though the ad on Amazon says you have to download the software, the software probably is on here. Now, the software you use to program the Bofang, and you need that software because hand programming, which you can do, is really tedious if you're going to program more than one channel. So, and I, and, uh, I can't show you the programming software because I'm using this. Okay, it's, it's nothing exciting. It's, it, looks, it looks like a spreadsheet and you fill, you, you fill in the frequency and the offset and uh, power out, similar to the chip, they call it, software for the Bofang. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, and, I, and you get this little gizmo here which is all in Chinese. 
Okay, let's get the box out of the way. Okay, get this out of the way. This, I guess I should have put that in the box, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to throw it on the floor. Okay, let's get all this stuff out of here. Okay, now what I'm going to try to do is uh, show you. Let me uh, let me just put the stock antenna on. Here's the stock antenna. It looks. I mean, this looks so much like a Bofang. It's just unreal. Even the same connect. Where'd the camera go? The same connector. SMA connector. I don't know if it's, I think it's the same gender. Well, we can find out. Okay, this is my original UV5R. I gotta watch it, I don't screw these things up. Yeah, it's the same gender. So the antenna is a female SMA, which I wish they were B and C, but B and C are uh, more expensive and they take up more room. So we're gonna put this on. And this antenna uh, looks familiar, but I think it's for my Retivas. Retivas antenna looks like this, same shape and configuration. This looks like a Retivas antenna. Okay, let's get some of this junk out of the way. So uh, let me go back here. This is original. Oh, my original Bofang radio. Try to get it close to the camera, and hopefully the camera will focus. Very, very similar. Same, about the same size. Um, buttons are a little different. This is the Bofang. Whoops! This is the Bofang. Can't tell which way, which hands is in which. Here's the other side, which has the connectors. And uh, yeah, as I said in the ad, here is the connector, so you can put the charger directly into the battery, charge the battery. You don't have to use uh, this thing right here, but you can do this if you want to. Well, it's because it's got the little tabs on the back. To match up with the tabs on this, got everything's backwards on my screen. Um, then you can use this little charging cable. Plus, it has a little light that will tell you that it's charging, and it should tell you when it's fully charged. So that's that. Now, one more thing is: did the chat room die? <laughs> Nobody's commenting. You're not making fun of me like you. No, I'm, I'm not stuck. You. you don't make fun of me. You can, but you don't. All right, so so that's the original. This is the upgraded. Now, Bofang has a bazillion different models. They're all just slightly different. And gosh, why can't I keep it in the camera? Here's my upgraded UV5R5. Looking more and more like this, this one right here. So... I, I don't think this one's been out very long. Maybe it has, and I just, until the gentleman, um, one of my subscribers told me about it, uh, I didn't pay attention to it. So, okay. So, very similar. Um, guy says the batteries are not interchangeable. I think that's what he was saying. Uh, has the uh, little light on the top you can use for a flashlight. This is a little hole. Gosh, why can't get my little hole to put the uh, strap on that I never use. Similar to two hands and radio, he doesn't use those either. It feels heavy. Really feels heavy. And this, yeah, I would say the finish is about the same. The display is maybe a tad bit taller on the Quan Sing. Maybe a little bit bigger. So let's put this one down and let's turn this on. See if it, see if the battery has a charge on it. Usually they do. They do. Here we go. Turn it. 
same voice, same gal talking to you. So let's. Uh, Oh, uh, stand by. Okay. I was trying to get, uh, let me just move up and down here so I can get the light. Cut. Yeah, I knew I couldn't get the uh, the lighting right for my camera. And of course, there's a nice glare. But the, uh, the, the, the display, well, let me go back. It's been a while since. Uh, um, it's been a while since I've looked at the Bofang display. I would say that on the Quonsin, the numbers and the letters and stuff are a little thinner, therefore a little easier to read than the Bofang. You, I don't know if you can see it good enough on my camera or not with all the glare and everything. Probably can. I apologize. It's a, it's a tiny, it looks like it's a tiny bit thinner. So therefore, a little bit easier to read. Okay, we have uh, the VFO uh, memory button here on the bow thing and the VFO memory button on the jet. I'm just going to call it the Q <laughs> on the Q down here. So that's moved. We have um, A, B buttons there, A, B buttons here. I guess I'm going to set these down. I'm going to set these down because I keep missing the camera. Let me, uh, let me lower my camera. There, there. Maybe you can see things a little better. Now, I'll try not to move them. And uh, this is the Bofang. This is the Q over here. So the top button is band. And I've forgotten where. Oh, the ba other band button on the, on the bow, on the B. I'll call this the B and the Q. On the B is over here. So things are moved around quite a bit. Basically the same function, but they moved around. Keypad. Uh, yep, those are swapped. Menu is here on this one on the left. Menu is here on the right. Not a big deal. Just enough to confuse you. And enough they can say, it's a different radio. You know, it's a different radio. All right. Um, I have not programmed this at all. They come from the factory programmed with some frequencies. So uh, let's turn the right. Okay, now this one is programmed. It's programmed with a whole bunch of channels. Um, about three years ago when I got this, uh, I had a local friend that had one, and he had typed in like 200 channels of information. And I went over to his house, and he programmed this radio with those 200 channels. I made a few little changes. And so this has got a whole bunch of frequencies in it. This is just got the factory stuff right now. So I will have to program in um, some frequencies for this radio using that software that you give it, give you. Um, what else? I think that's about the other thing I, I will do is I will get out uh, my good power meter and frequency meters and do some testing on this guy. Uh, if you go back to my old shows, I said I wasn't going to pick that up, and yet I did. My old shows, I did extensive testing on, I think, three different models of the Bofang, including these two, plus a third one. Slide this over a little bit. And what I found that the Bofang's actual output to both their antennas into a dummy load was below the advertised five watts. Uh, in some cases, it was only like four watts at max watt at max power. It's going to be curious to see what this one would do. Now I have another Bofang. It's bigger, has a bigger battery, and it's supposed to put out six watts. And I think it put out about five watts in my test. 
All right. I'm trying to think of anything else I can do just for this introductory show. Uh, let me see if there's any questions. There's no questions. Okay. That's 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 cool. Um, I wonder how many of you actually have this radio. Like I guess I didn't find too much information on the internet about this radio. So it's kind of new to me. Uh, the programming software looks straightforward, except you got a lot of typing to do. Um, I think there's like ooh, six or eight columns of possible information you can put in to program the radio. You don't have to put it all in. Like there's, I think one column is uh, like a comment or something like that. So that's going to take me a little while to do that. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. This does look very different than the Bofang, but it's the same concept um, where you it slides in, which I always struggle getting it there. Yeah, that goes in right away. Oh, okay, that's no problem. I I actually like the, the, the cradles from the standpoint, number one, you have this indicator to tell you whether the radio is charged or not. I don't know if there's any other indicator if you're just using the direct charge. And it makes a nice stain if you just want to have it sitting on your desk um, and not get knocked over. Now, let's see. Where does this plug in? Okay. This plugs in the back here. That's where that plugs in. Or it plugs in the side of the radio right here for direct charging and not having to use the cradle. That's, that's handy. So let's talk about differences. And I'm going to compare it to the old Bofang right here. That's what I'm but I mainly been comparing it to. Okay, this radio, which on sale right now, $24.90 on Amazon, came with this antenna, the little short antenna, which is a terrible antenna. That is a terrible antenna. I think when I did my... Uh, power test in this antenna, depending on the frequency, of course, it was only putting out like three and a half watts out of five. It should be. So this is a tip. Most people say when you get this radio, throw this away and get a decent antenna. This this radio comes with two antennas. So that's a big difference right now. Here's now this is there's no markings on here at all, I don't think. No, there's no markings on this. So this is a knockoff of the, uh, I wrote it down someplace, NA771, which is a fantastic antenna, although it's quite long, but it is a fantastic antenna. Actually, I believe it gives you some power gain, but it is quite long. Uh, but this is not the original, uh, the Quokia or something like that it's pronounced. This is not it. This is just a knockoff. So I don't know how good that is. Ian's it's a knockoff. I have somewhere, I have the good antenna that looks like this. And it's about $20, $20 or $25. So it's not cheap. So that's one difference is they give you the additional antenna. The antenna on that comes with standard with this radio is different than the uh, one that comes with the Bofang. Uh, let's see if I can keep these together and show you. It's a little bit longer. It's not quite as thick. I can say this antenna, whoops, going to the wrong one. This antenna looks like the antenna that's on my Retivus digital radio that's sell for like $250. So this looks like it might be a better antenna. There again, it could be a knockoff. I don't know. All right. Um, and it comes, this, this radio allows you to use direct charging. It does come with a programming cable and it appears to be the software. I have to check that out. I already loaded the software off the internet. So, uh, I'll look and see if it's the same file. I can say it's a little hokey when you use the link that's on Amazon to get the file 
it looks a little hokey. And uh, it's a zip file. With When you unzip it, it's an EXE file, which typically you kind of have to be leery of EXE files. No, There's no text file or anything along with it. So it's a little scary, but I loaded it. So if it's, it's got a virus. My computer now has a virus. Okay, one time, one more thing. I'll just go back to for a second. The this radio, the new one, the Q I call it, uh, is twenty nine dollars on Amazon right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in my Amazon store, even though I haven't thoroughly tested it, so I might take it out. Um, this Bofang, the UV five R, which is the older version. Is right now on Amazon twenty four ninety, and then there is a revised version of this. Let's mute the paper. I like revised version of this sold by TID Radio, and it's got the it's got the same. It's the UV five R packaged with the additional stuff that this radio comes with, and it's thirty six dollars and ninety nine cents. The Bofang, like this one, or it might be this one, with the package deal that has the additional antenna and the programming cable is $40, which is what this one would cost you plus the programming cable, but not the, ant the additional antenna. So that package deal, if you want to stay with the Bofang for... $40, if you want the Bofang, is a good deal because you really need that programming cable. Programming these things by hand is a nightmare. You can do it, but it'll probably take you a couple of days to do 50 channels. All right, that's about it. Um, now, one more thing I want to mention is you probably all have read about it. His Bofang is in trouble for their radios. And the reason they're in trouble with the FCC in the United States and the FCC with the FCC is that these radios, the Bofang radios, will transmit outside of the amateur radio bands, which that's all they're certified for. So the FCC say, uh, cease and desist. You're you're building radios that can transmit outside of the devices, outside of the bands that we certified them for. And like a lot of people use these as um, what do they call them GMRS. Is it GMRS? I think it's GMRS, which uh, you don't have to pass a test to use a GM GMRS radio. I think you had to buy a license. Buy a license where in the amateur radio band you have to pass the test, an amateur radio test, to transmit on the amateur radio bands. So that's kind of up in the air right now for the Bofangs. And I don't know where it's going. You can still buy the Bofangs. I got them on Amazon right now. I checked it this morning. Um, so I don't know what that's about. Let me look at the chat, see what we got going here. Okay, a couple of people said they are not into... Uh, amateur radio, they're only interested in shortwave. That's fine. For AM and FM shortwave, that's fine. Um, this is more for people who are into amateur radio or like to listen on amateur radio. And the beauty of all these radios, I believe, I haven't tested this one now, all these radios, you can hear a lot other bands. You cannot hear shortwave. You can hear VHF in UHF frequencies, such as, and I programmed this radio, actually both of these radio, both both of the Bofangs radios are already programmed. They will receive the NOAA weather channels. Now, this radio probably will once you program it. I haven't done that. Uh, I think they will also, not very well, I think they'll also receive the Bofangs again. Those are the ones I've tested. Um, the, some of the air bands. So you can listen to a lot of things on these radios but besides shortwave. The question is, what can you listen to on this guy? Uh, advertised, it says, 
you can listen to 136 to 174. The NOAA weather stations are at 162, so you can receive the, I mean, you can listen to NOAA radio on this, this new radio on the queue. And you can listen to 400 to 520. Uh, both of those, no, not the, that one, but the VHF range, you can listen to um, the airband where airplanes use. So you can listen to other things than just the amateur radio bands. But no, no shortwave. No shortwave. Uh, I believe, although, let me see, did it say? I know these two, the two Bofangs, you can listen to FM radio also. It will tune in FM. Um, I think it said something. Yeah. Only, oh, yes. The other range is 65 to 108 megahertz. So you can listen to FM on the queue. So, so my point is you can listen to other things besides um, the amateur radio band. Yes, yes, you can listen to NOAA weather on these stations. Matter of fact, if I knew where it was, I, I might be able to find it on this one um, because I have programmed this one. I've got about, oh, there it is. Okay. There, I, there you go. So you can, you can, I know for sure on, both, on the Bofangs you can because I've already programmed them. And it says, um, according to the frequency range of the Q radio, you can program that in too. So yes, you can, you can hear the, and that's what uh, these are kind of used for. Uh, what they're supposed to be used for is amateur radio operators, like, which I said, like I said, requires you to pass the test and get a license. But I don't know about the Q, the Bofangs, you can actually transmit on other frequencies than the am amateur radio band. You can, uh, I can say, I think one of them is called GMRS, and then there's another one. And I think you, all you have to do is uh, buy a license. There's no test involved. So that's what the FCC is upset about, is that you can do that because the FCC is saying, as I understand it, that, hey, guys, we only certified these for the amateur radio bands. And you're letting the radios have the capability of actually transmitting on some of the other bands. So these have a pretty good range when it comes to little radios like this. Uh, they're supposed to put out five watts. They put out a little less than five watts. So this is more power than your standard... Uh, I think it's GMR, GMRS, and then there's one other one, walkie-talkie type radios. They only, I think they're restricted to like one watt or less. So Bofang is definitely uh, doing some no-nos. And, and that's why people are buying them, and they're like, oh, wow, for 25 bucks, you know, I can have an emergency radio, and I can broadcast in all kinds of bands. Alrighty, any other comments in the chat room and or corrections? I will be programming this guy up. I'll get my uh, power meters and my frequency meter guys out. We'll do some power and frequency testing. The Bofangs were way below what they were advertised as far as power output. They were right on frequency. And we're going to see if this one is any better. It looks so much like the Bofangs, even the display. The only difference is the buttons are in different places. That's the only obvious difference. All right, we're going to call this a wrap. Let's see what's in the chat. I have one. I've had one for two months. It's the same as a Bofang, excuse me, Bofang. And no chip support, that's correct. Yet there is software is limited to channel programming and adding names. 
Um, so you Robert, you are you saying that the uh, the programming software does less than the chip software? Because when I, I just I just loaded it this morning and I looked at the spreadsheet that you have to put stuff in, it looked like the same number of columns. Now maybe it's not. For instance, maybe there's not in on the Bofang programming software, there's an option that when you use the scan function to scan through the frequencies that are in memory, one you're while you're programming a channel, you can say don't include this in scan. Like for instance, I don't include in the scan the NOAA weather because it's going to stop on there. I don't know that the Q software gives you that option. You may be capable of that, but I don't know if it gives you that option. So that could be a difference. Oh, a Andrew, yeah. <laughs> okay, no problem, Andrew. I, I struggle with a good time of the day to do hangouts. I, I really don't know a good time of the day to do hangouts. I kind of picked this one for most people in the United States, uh, in the three time zones, the United States, I, I would be covered where they would probably be up and around. Uh, I know, you know, in Europe, it's going to be three to four, maybe five hours later, which is probably maybe where you are, Andrew, Andrew, and in Asia, Australia and stuff like that, it's 11, 12 hours difference. So it's, 11 o'clock at night. So that's probably where you're at, Andrew. I, I think you told me in my previous show that you were in Australia. I understand. Okay, thanks for stopping by, Andrew. Ah, okay, Robert Young says that that feature of turning off the stopping when doing the scan, that option is available on the Q programming software. So I, I'm not sure what is missing uh, when you program the queue. I'll, I'll find out, you know, I'll make a note of that so I can tell you next time. Okay, guys in France, and it's probably France is like five hours later. So it's probably um, maybe four o'clock or five o'clock in France right now in the afternoon. Is that right, guy? Okay. Oh, it's seventeen thirty-nine. He said that in his in his message, and I missed it. I I didn't recognize the nomenclature where he's got seventeen H thirty-nine. So it's five thirty-nine p.m. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, if you think of any questions, you can when, once this video is released, which it's, I think it's done automatically as soon as I stop, it gets released. You can put the, some comments uh, in the release version on YouTube, and I'll try to address them when I do a show in the future on this radio. Yes, Guy says I'm right. It's 5.40. Okay, I think that's it. I'm looking looking forward to checking out. I wish I could remember the gentleman who told me about the sale. By, because you get this whole, you know, I was thinking about getting one of these, but then I read you have to get a programming cable and you have to get different software. And so I just kind of put it off. But he told me about this package that has everything I jumped on it for $29 or $28, $27.99, I believe it is. I'll put that in my Amazon store. That's it. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by and have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, Robert says it will not go into the system settings. Oh, okay, okay. You're right, Robert. Now remember, there's a total different page in the chip software for set or setting the overall system information, and that's not available on the Q programming software. Big difference, big difference. So you, ha you have to... You'd have to go through manually and do all the system setting.
such as the squelch level and all that stuff manually on the queue you can't program it in like you can on the bofet all right thank you robert for that information and uh thank everybody for stopping by it's um i think we learned something i know i've learned something from you guys about this radio already and um, have a great day bye-bye